Well, this isn't the mine that's our target today, but it's as far as we can drive and it seems like a great place to park. Check out this old machinery, so why not? Got a neat old boiler right here and hoist right here. Looks like the local wildlife has been making use of the machinery after humans no longer are. This is a shaft, you see it right there, but it's been gated. So, even if we wanted to get into this one, our friends of, our friends in the government service have looked out for us and are protecting us from that. Another good hike to get to this mine, but uh, the views are certainly rewarding and give me an excuse to stop and catch my breath while I show you the uh, scenery in, scenery that we are in. Getting close, there's a bunch of little prospects and things like that around here. So we're getting there and hopefully it's a good one. When we arrive. If you look back where my buddies are, there's a reason I skipped videoing that part of the mine. And you might think they're walking kind of funny. And there's a reason for that, and that that whole section is a false floor. And so we had to duck walk over the rails to get to this point. There's no way I was going to shoot video and uh, try and walk on the rails and balance and do everything else. Because the pit underneath that section was deep. And I just didn't feel like doing that. Going for a deep, deep swim. Now here, you can see a platform here with a bunch of limelight dripping down and stuff. There's like a little bit of a stove or something up above, but nothing you know, to get too excited about. Looking ahead, uh, this looks like a big mine. Uh, just, you know, maybe I'm biased because I'm looking at the size of that uh, uh, assuming that's ventilation tubing, but uh, just a spacious attic and such. See, there's a rail sign that you can't see. Eh, rails right there in front of me, and uh, there's drill marks right there. Carrying on ahead, gotta keep an eye out for false floors in this mine. Goes up there in bins, getting shallower here, which is nice, because this water is cold. Uh, I see some stoles or something right there, which makes me think there could well be another false floor there. Or a wind's dropping down, or something I don't want to go down. Yeah, I'd say so. Man, this is a sketchy mine. I really don't like all these false floors. So they're making their way across that section of the winds, another false floor. And uh, we're going to keep carrying on and definitely keep an eye out for false floors. So this mine is full. Cool. But the water is getting shallower, which is nice. And it looks like we've got another wind here on the left. Oh, man, we're not getting a break with these. So there's a look at the next winds we just came to. And we're struggling to uh, navigate past all of this, as you can see. And hopefully, we're gonna run out of winds this soon, because this is getting old. Just keeps running here down for a ways, it looks like. have a fault on the left here. See how flat and smooth that is? That's pretty interesting. Looks like somebody might have taken a sample or something there on the left at one point. And it just keeps running back. And I see a ladder right there. And that's out of the water. 
So good stuff. This looks like a bit of a mess. Uh, the big tank that came down there. Look at that. Wow, this is okay. There's a lot going on here. It's got this big tank right here. And looks like maybe another one right there. And we've got this stoke shooting up here. I'm going to climb up and get a better look. All right, there's that ladder right there. And uh, it was with a great deal of difficulty that I made my way over these timbers. That was really hard, much harder than it looked. Uh, just want to give you another view, looking up the stope, hopefully no water falls in. Uh, see, they just, looks like they chase a bunch of quartz up there. Ah, oh, shit, I'm afraid the water's getting in the camera. Hopefully the audio is still okay. Uh, as I was saying, there's a, a drift going off this way, but after I just went through to get across those timbers, I'm going with the easy one on the left. I'm going left hand a little now. And uh, the guys went ahead of me, obviously. See some pretty beefy timber. Timber set right here. And uh, see some drill steel stuck in the side up there. Not sure well. And uh, the ventilation pipe keeps running back here too, so probably something decent back here. How you guys doing? Good. Okay. All right, right on ahead now. Really nice being out of that water. Sort of bending and twisting our way through the added back here, which uh, would suggest they were falling in the vein. Don't see a uh, visible vein, <coughs> excuse me, a visible vein right now, but that doesn't mean anything. It just means I don't see it right now. Looks like there might be a fork up here. Ah. Some miners graffiti, they're tracking the ore cart loads coming out here. You see a couple uh, drill holes there. Uh, yeah, just running off that way. And the ventilation pipe is going this way, which would suggest that this might just be a little stoke chamber. I'm gonna check just to be sure. But that's my hunch right now. So I think that's the end right there. But you gotta check to be sure. Yeah, that's it. So we'll go down that left branch one. All right, they're checking out that one I just checked out. And you'll come with me and we'll go this way. Walking, I'm not gonna complain about that. Little pocket they uh, cleared out there. That's not gold, that's water sparkling on the rock. That's a big line. Looks like there's another. Junction here, and this one's got ventilation going both ways. That runs back there, and like there's something else back there. I think I'm gonna stick with the left hand rule. All right, left hand rules in effect in this one, so we're going left and. Is that the obligatory can of Olympia beer? It is. Miners always seem to drink Olympia beer. For some this is a big mine. A lot bigger than I expected. 
bucket right here. With, I can't tell if those are bolts or old track spikes or whatever. Probably bolts from the look of it. Still running ahead. It's like a, I think all that opens up a bit up there or it's just ground fault. But there's something up ahead. Another jump. This is a really, really good one. Alright, uh, that could just be a stope. Check in a minute. Uh, look at the head. Yeah, it keeps running that way. Oh boy, that is very deep winds right there with a bunch of weird stuff growing in it. Uh, somebody put a ladder up there, but that's uh, that's pretty high in the sketch factor since that wood is on. It's very rotten, and I don't know how long ago that was done. Also, it looks like it just goes back to right there uh, where it's caved, like a ore chute failed or a stope failed or something and stops. So, don't really feel the need to go back there and take a close look at a collapse. So, I'm going to backtrack to where this was taken off here. Let's see how this looks. Got some beefy timbers here. Some really nasty mud. I'm almost hoping this is caved. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, like I was saying about the mud. Just went up to my thigh in mud. Um, I am not sorry. This is caved actually. Uh, looks like there might have been a stope running up here at one time. Uh, we have so much ground fall and such here. This is really bad ground. So much ground fall here, it's hard to tell. Uh, and then, yeah, this is just uh, obliterated back there. That is done. So with, with the assistance of the uh, other lights from the guys, you can get a better sense of that, that green stringy morass down there. That is wild. I've never seen a wind choked up like that. I would not want to go down there. However, we're not going to. We're going to go straight. That was a quartz vein right there. Wrapping around, still bending around a lot. Uh, some took some rotten wood. Oxen here might not like that. Got the timbers or were intended to be timbers. Still bending and twisting around. something there but there's not okay it's like a little bit of ground fall up here maybe from people hacking away the quartz that is probably the end right there for us but look at all this quartz in the meantime that is pretty impressive That's pretty cool. See those stringers fanning out from the main vein? That's pretty interesting. The guy's coming. And you can see, uh, I guess I can't tell if somebody hacked this down or if that came down on its own. Got another old bucket right there. Yeah, I see somebody hacked that down. Look at those samples right there. And, uh, 
yeah, I'd say that's the end of the line. I was going to check to be 100% certain. These timbers are huge back here. Wow. Interesting growths back here. Almost looks like pubic hair or something. Uh, yeah, that is uh, really, really caved. And uh, they knew it was bad ground because you can see they uh, stuck all these heavy, heavy timbers here. So, we'll go back to the last junction and pick up on the right. All right, that is the junction we just came from. I'm back at the junction where that Olympia beer can is. So, let's go check it out. There's something up here on the left. And that's it. That just stops right there. Now what that is, I have no idea. Um, uh, deck cord? Deck trees, yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Weird rubber, uh, rubber you guys have that weird insulation. Uh, weird rubber insulation. Oh, uh, uh, anti-static maybe? Yeah, that, that makes sense. All right, we're back at that section I really didn't like going across. Uh, I got a PTSD from that. And in that big stoke chamber again, I remembered I have a tool that can help show you distance and such. It's a uh, green laser. So if we look at something right in front of me, you see how tight the grid is on the laser. And so we then take that Point it up the stoop here. Gives you a better sense of, uh, well, hopefully, gives you a better sense of how far up that goes. Or maybe it just looks weird. I don't know. Tell me what you think. All right, that's us coming in from the uh, section of the heat. And first look ahead. Keeps going. So let's go check it out. I thought there might be different rock or something over here, but this is just identical to uh, what we've been through. One bucket. Still winding around like the last one. This looks interesting up here. You can see the, uh, the track bends around on the right there, and they undercut this section here. Where it looks like there actually might be a fault, given how flat it is. And uh, put that timber right there just to uh, prop that up. It's kind of interesting. Still have our airline here. So this must go somewhere. All right, first junction. Let's see. Uh, Track right there at the forks. Pretty cool. Something running off as far as I can see on the right, and it doesn't look very far on the left. Uh, oh man. Uh, it does look like it might be open beyond. I'll climb up there and look in a second. So those are those timbers I was just checking out. Uh, all this debris came down from that raise right there, and uh, Jake is the man. He's actually trying to scramble up that. No, uh, no he's not. He changed his mind. <laughs> Can't really say I blame him, but uh, I respect him at least giving it a shot. This isn't all that's back here, though. There's the remains of a ladder right there. Hey, Jake, yeah, just throw that ladder over there, man. <laughs> sure, it's not rotten. And the attic actually keeps shooting back that way. So I'll rejoin you down there. All right, I just squeezed down from there. You guys are coming down behind me now. And the attic still looks pretty good. There's a little bit of water in here now, uh, as you can see. But it still looks pretty solid. I mean, that, that section back there, that wasn't a round ball. I mean, that was just uh, muck. We gotta drop down that radius, so. 
That was not bad. Looks like an ore chute right here. Or at least what's left of an ore chute. The uh, attic goes up there and bends. It's still going. And then the ore chute in front of us here. You can see the bottom ripped out. Uh, just brought it out and then, you know, any rock in it would have smashed through and that's what you're seeing here. Looking up beyond uh, into the stope, it wasn't a huge stope. It just uh, goes up there and stops. So I'm actually a little bit surprised that they put a chute in here, but lots of things surprised me in mind. All right, that ore chute just checked out is right there. You see the guys coming up behind me. The uh, at it, of course, continues as I said. Something that's interesting is they ripped up all the rail beyond this point, which uh, I find kind of odd. Usually they do that, you know, if it's for scrap or something, they usually get the stuff near the front. And so you can see the divots where the uh, track ties were. So I'm thinking that maybe they uh, pulled these up and repurposed them. And I was use the rail somewhere else in the mine rather than just going out and buying a new rail. Oh, this is neat. This, uh, this timber gallery here, or gallery of timbers, I should say. That's a really cool shot. Wow. I'm standing here admiring that one. That's not a photograph. I'm admiring that. That looks cool. Uh, it looks still a laggy on the side. That's pretty, pretty, uh, what am I trying to say? It's pretty heavy lagging. You can see the tin is actually stuck back there as well. Remains of the ladder there. Water dripping down. I hope nothing goes into the microphone because that really messes up the audio. Uh, there's a pipe jammed in there. And I think that this is probably as far so we're going to be able to go because that looks like a very severe collapse. Yeah, that is seriously collapsed. Uh, oops, let me turn that off. Um, this is that ugly shale type rock uh, that just caves all the time for some reason. It's, uh, it's really brittle. Here's a, something on the floor. Uh, you can see how brittle it is. I mean, there's some quartz in there. I'm not talking about the quartz. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the shaley crap. That stuff it just crumbles unbelievably easy and uh, creates big messes like this. Because that is not any way of running past that. There's no way. So we were walking out and Jake noticed this glove that for some reason expanded significantly in the water. You might put your hand next to that for comparison. Okay, so he's got a normal sized hand. He doesn't have a dwarf hand. And uh, <laughs> you can see, look how big that glove is. Could in, be just a Mickey Mouse glove. In comparison, that's interesting. So we just came from that section there and we have this drift on the right to go check out still. And that is, look how far that guy shoots you guys. That goes way back there. Wow. I thought we were done. No, not, not done yet. Alright. Something going off on the left there. Looks like it might be powder storage. A tank right here. Yeah, I would say. Pretty sure this was explosive storage. Yeah, it was. Uh, you can actually see the, uh, the decayed explosives right there, which is interesting. And yeah, they just would have rested on the pallets back there. That's that uh, explosive storage area right there. We just checked out, and this is still just punching straight back for days. This doesn't seem so much like they're falling in vain, it's just punching straight back. 
you know, the others were uh, twisting around a lot more. But this, this is just going pretty much straight back. So I don't know if they knew what they were going for, or they were hoping to intersect a vein or what, but this is wild. Man, this just keeps going. Wow. Finally got a little bit of a bend here. Uh, yeah, it's twisting around a bit more here. Got a uh, solitary timber right there. It's uh, very well wedged in place. A lot of flowstone, colorful flowstone coming down here. And it's oozing down from that crack right there. This looks like a fault. You can see how smooth the rock is there. Possible fault, I should say. Um, yeah, sort of twist around more, like I said, up here. Timber set right there. I thought we were at a junction. Uh, I think we are at a junction, actually. Well, that timber uh, is not really uh, doing much anymore, is it? Anyway, uh, got something large right there. Let me surprise there was a winds or something back there. And in front of me here, We've got a very cool old wooden barrel. That is, I'm amazed that's still intact. Got some, uh, looks like pipe fittings in there. We have some Havelina motor oil from Texaco. We've got a ground fall right there. Looks like it sloughed off from there. And I'm not sure what this is yet. Uh, that's an ore cart right there. That's cool. And uh, there's an ore cart back here, you guys. So there's the ore cart right there. And all the stuff on the ground has come from this raise right there. Uh, it's a pink rock that got snagged on those timbers. Probably shouldn't spend too much time here. Uh, can't tell if it goes up there and keeps it going or not. Uh, no way for me to get up there though. It's pretty steep and this is all slippery. And of course there's no ladder. Um, that ore cart looks like it's missing its wheels. So I don't know if souvenir hunters or something came in here and snagged them or what. Oh, it slipped. Uh, yeah, it is missing its wheels. That's too bad. Nothing on the side. Can't say I'm too surprised. The uh, attic keeps running back. I think it stops right there. I'm just gonna double check in a second. After I look at the ore cart from this side. That's just... Okay, I was wondering why it was up in the air like that. And somebody hiked it up and stuck that in there, which is interesting. That's pretty cool. I mean, even without wheels, you don't see ore carts that often. Usually people have uh, stolen them. So, that's good to see. Looks like a crude ladder right there. And I would imagine the ore cart was being used here and uh, at that stoop back there. I can see where they stopped here though. I don't see anything of value here. This is just that uh, crumbly stuff I was talking about earlier. All right, we're back where that uh, wooden barrel is and the ore cart is uh, back there. And we had this section in front of us that I speculated was wings. Some hoses on the ground. Oh wow, there's a lot going on here. Man, there's a lot going on there. There's a platform right there, which uh, 
Wow. Taking all this in. So there's a huge platform right here in front of us that leads up to there. And there must be uh, some pretty serious workings up there to have a platform of this size. I'm thinking unless there was a hoist up there that uh, would have led down. Yeah, but that's where the hoist was. Led down this winds here. You see the uh, skip way over the man way right there. The ladder and the skip car around down here. And then of course this is the skip car, which is cool. You don't see these too often. And uh, yeah, it just plunges down for an unknown depth. I'd love to know how far. With a skip car, that's got to go down pretty deep. You see they had the uh, airlines and such running down there too. So that might be the remains of a pump there. That's really good. Oh, you can still, they even have the wheels on it still. That's really cool. A lot of times people will strip the wheels off. See the cable right there. Wow, this is really neat. And uh, oh, there's a riveted tank right there. That must have been for the air, obviously. For the uh, that was air. The compressed air was stored in there and then pumps down. And yeah, that's gotta be where the hoist was up there because it looks like it just stopped right there. All right, so that skip car is right there. And uh, better look at that compressed air tank. It's amazing they got some of this stuff back here. I mean, we're pretty deep in the mine. I'd be curious to see how they got the hoist up there. That's a good point as well. It's a rope actually, that's not cable. Um, yeah, that's a good point actually about the hoist. That's uh, there's a lot going on in that chamber. I like that. That was good stuff. A lot of flowstone here. And looking ahead, a big ore chute right there. Another ore chute that's failed, of course. But it's a way to look up this one. So that's looking up the ore chute with both of our lights and. Man, that goes up a good distance because it's taking both of our lights to illuminate that. Be curious to know what's up there. Looking ahead, just keeps going, man. It's like, this drift is enormous. Looks like we've got another uh, winds right here on the right, or maybe. Uh, it's hard to say. I don't know if that's a. Yeah, that's a. Uh, winds that's filled in with a bunch of debris so that plugged winds is right there and this is looking up that ore chute across the way and I noticed that this timber is rotting in an interesting way it almost looks like there's a bird nest in the timber the way it's rotting because you can see how those bits of wood and such are coming down and collecting there. It's kind of cool. Huh. Level. That's been there for a while. Better days. And actually, there's just another ore chute right here. There's looking up the next ore chute. You can definitely get up that one. Yeah, I mean, if you were motivated, you could get up there. But it looks like it pinches out up top, actually. Maybe filled in with rubble. Uh, some wedges right there. This is all pretty badly rotted. You've got that master ore chute is right there. And it looks like we've got is that a drift level or a winds? Uh, hard to tell what that is. It doesn't look like it downs very steeply. It could just be a drift level that's slightly lower, but it's flooded either way. And meanwhile, this drift just keeps going. Wow, I keep thinking, you know, it's probably gonna end soon and it just keeps going. Just keeps going. 
stringers right here. Uh, okay, that's cool. There's a uh, okay. There's a lot of things going on here. First of all, look at all that flow stone with that orange on it. That's pretty cool. And then you can see they had a, a pull out here for the ore car splitter so they could pass each other right there. See the track uh, branches off to the right there. And this is, like I said, a little pull out right there. Meanwhile. This keeps heading back. There's a pair of bends to the right. Looks like there's another ore chute. This is a very shallow ore chute right here. Heading up there. I might check that on the way out as I'm motivated we are. Uh, looks like there was something here in this jumble of wood, but it's hard to say what at this point. You can see a drill bit in front of us right here. It's pretty neat. It's bent. And the add it. Keeps twisting around. Looks like the backfield back right there. Getting into some pretty uh, serious quartz here. It's all quartz. Also on this side. Quartz now here. That's a lot of quartz back here. Just slab of it running through this section, and then I'll just show you the end it starts breaking down into stringers again. There's a big gob of it back there, and then it starts to uh, taper out. <laughs> this just goes on and on and on. Oh man, another. Okay, I'm saying another junction. You can see the uh, split right there, but this one looks like it just uh, goes there and ends. And all those stringers, that looks pretty cool actually. The way for all those stringers right there. BS. Well, I know if those some of these initials are the same bullshit, but this is not bullshit. This is pretty cool. Just keep going and going and going. That's a pretty sharp bend right there. Really dark, dark rock here. Uh, looks like there's a pile or a ground fall or something up ahead. This is obviously the bit more modern. Ish limelight looking stuff. Uh, it's like what I thought was something up ahead, just a bend, another bend. Because we're still. Uh, oh, that's cool. Look at all these core samples that are uh, getting encased by this iron stuff flowing down. I think that's limonite. They're neat with the samples. Uh, this line just keeps going. Oh, this is really cool. Wow. Look at these trays of core samples. That is awesome. And those are, uh, I, these are the most intact core samples I think I've ever seen in terms of, you know, usually you just see little fragments, for example. Like those are, but these are uh, solidly intact. That is really cool. 
Yeah, guys, I haven't been that articulate in this one, but it's been a long day. Um, it looks like this is the end. Uh, some more core samples here. Yeah, this is it. Man, that is really cool. All the stringers. So this would appear to be it for this mine. Um, tell you what, you underestimate a mine, and it always seems to surprise you. I surely underestimated this one. Good, good stuff. I was making my way out and uh, noticed a somewhat unique glowstone. Yeah, most glowstone is smooth, but this is all uh, well, bubbly, for lack of a better word. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And uh, just to put that in context for you, or you know, give you a broader perspective, that's how it looks on that wall right there. Not that that doesn't look cool too, but I just thought the uh, that rough pebbly look was kind of unique. I hadn't seen that before. So that's the way we came from, and we're back at that ore chute. Uh, the last one we passed, the one that wasn't too steeply uh, inclined, you know, where it came down right there. The guys are just checking it out. It's great having other people with you because I can send them up and have them do this without me needing to scramble up there. All right, they said it kept going, so I'm coming up, unfortunately. Uh, this is really steep. We came from down there, making my way up. This is pretty uh, tiring because you got to squeeze. You can't stand up or anything. You got to squeeze through this somewhat tight area. And uh, yeah, you can see we're headed up that way. All right, squeezed up from down there. And... Uh, off the guys and so takes off up that way right and what was up it started you said you stopped up there or? yeah it stops up there it's a face it looks like it's about yep. 30 40 feet that way 30 or 40 feet up there okay face there that they've been drilling uh, it does not connect to the other oh yeah okay, I see like the vein right there too very All right. surprisingly it doesn't connect to the others huh weird because there's so many one after another. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. I'm glad I don't have to go all the way up there. Yeah.